Dear students, let us continue the study in this paper which is Forensic Chemistry and Explosives and in this particular module we shall understand about the analysis of trace evidence and when we do so we will be studying about what are the trace evidence, how to collect the trace evidence, then ultimately when you have collected the trace evidence, how the forensic examination of the trace evidence is done and then you should also be familiar with the characteristics of the trace evidence. In the last module we have learnt about the management of arson cases which includes an effective arson crime scene management and you have seen that it helps a lot in suitable proceeding of crime scene investigation and you study that it is based on standard manuals and protocols. The role of every concerned person engaged in the arson crime scene investigation and also the responsibilities of investigating officer or the administrator during the arson case management has been explained in detail and that provides a systematic approach for investigation. So let us continue with this background and go into trace evidence. Any tiny fragment of physical evidence such as hairs, fibers from clothing or carpeting or the pieces of glass etc can help tell the story of what happened at the crime scene. These are referred to as trace evidence and can be transferred when two objects they come in contact with each other or when some small particles are dispersed by an action or movement. For example, paint can be transferred from one vehicle to another when a collision happens or similarly another example you can see a hair can be left on a cloth during a physical attack like especially the rape cases. Reconstruction of an event can be done with the aid of these evidences or they may indicate that a person or that particular thing was present. So these provide very very crucial information in solving the cases. Suspicious collection of materials from a crime scene can yield ample amount of information about where a sample came from and how it aids to reconstruct the story. Scientists analyze the physical, optical and chemical properties of trace evidence and use a variety of tools to find and compare samples and then look for the sources or the common origin of each item. Most test methods require microscopy and or chemical analysis because they are very very tiny piece of evidence. Enough of the information can be disclosed about what happened at a scene such as whether an item or body was moved or whether someone was assaulted from rear side or from the side, uh, side or from front. Some laboratories consider fire accelerant also as trace and others will include them in chemistry even though the same tests are conducted in both the laboratories. A suspect may often interact with the victim while committing crime, the environment of the crime scene or both. So this is very important to keep in mind and that is why the trace evidence become very important. During this interaction the exchange of physical evidence can occur. The significance of trace evidence in investigation of criminal cases 
was first discovered by Dr. Edmund Locard, a French scientist and he expressed his views on the trace evidence in a philosophical way and this can be read as follows. Wherever he steps, whatever he touches, whatever he leaves, even unconsciously will serve as silent witness against him. Not only his fingerprints or his footprints, but his hair, the fibers from his clothes, the glass he breaks, the tool marks he leaves, the paint he scratches, the blood or semen he deposits or collects, all of these and more bear mute witness against him and I add him or her. This is evidence that does not forget. It is not confused by the excitement of the moment. It is not absent because human witnesses are. It cannot prejure itself. It cannot be wholly absent. Only its interpretation can are. Only human failure to find it, to study and understand it can diminish its value. So you see these words are really giving so much clue that these trace evidence will give you so much information and as forensic scientists it is up to you whether you are able to analyze or not. So if you are able to analyze definitely there will be so much crucial information which will help you solve the case. So with this background let us try to understand this module in more detail with the help of graphics and visuals. In last century, trace evidence were used by forensic scientists in order to reconstruct crimes or to designate the people, places and things tangled in them. In order to show the progress and practices of forensic investigations, several case studies have been published. This includes the use of trace evidence to solve the crime. The role of trace evidence is important in accident investigation as it involves the movement of one part against another, hence leave a telltale mark. Few examples of trace evidences are fibers, glass, paint chips, fingerprints, tire impression, glove prints, hairs, cosmetics, lipsticks, plant fibers, soil and botanical materials. As the capabilities, availability and networking of comparison databases from scientists and manufacturers became more tough, samples of items such as paint, glass and even soil could be compared against known standards to provide solid and consistent classifications. For example, the National Automotive Paint File is a Federal Bureau of Investigations FBI, database containing more than 45,000 samples of automotive paint from manufacturers dating back to the 1930s. Sherwin-Williams Automotive Finishes also maintains a large database, Formula Express, which can be very helpful in identifying year, make and model based on color availability. The National Institute of Justice maintains a list of some available databases. Trace investigators must stay abreast of advances in manufacturing techniques, materials, coatings and processes. Every item that can be touched or transported has the potential to become trace evidence. Therefore, 
investigators and analysts must consider the potential that a product may have a new or updated version available. Collection of trace evidence Figure 1 Trace evidence collection tool the collection process begins with documentation of crime scene and analysis of evidence location. Several materials are used for collecting evidence items. These materials include containers made up of paper, wood and glass, bags and envelope, non-breakable and leak-proof containers are used for transportation of liquid items. Evidence such as blood and plants which are moist or wet are collected in plastic containers and sent back to the area where evidence is stored. Once evidence reaches in secure location, it is removed and allow to dry completely. This is then repackaged in a new dry paper container. Note that the evidence should not be packed in plastic or paper containers for more than two hours because microorganisms start growing in it and destroy the evidence. The investigator responsible for packaging and carrying should take care on the following issues. Take precautions to prevent contamination. Package fragile items carefully. Freeze or immediately transport items containing soil to the laboratory. Transport all volatile samples to the laboratory in a timely manner. Comply with shipping regulations. Analysis of Trace Evidence Trace material analysis starts with visual examination of the evidence using macrophotography followed by microscopic analysis. There are different analytical methods based on different types of material available for analysis such as stereo microscope scanning electron microscope SEM it is used in x-ray analysis for selected sample area it is important in situations where chemical residue shows presence of unusual elements that indicates chemical attack of the product the gunshot residue can be identified using elemental analysis or scanning making use of energy dispersive spectroscope. Several analytical methods such as mass spectrometry, MS, high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, and infrared spectroscopy, IR, are used to identify small amount of explosives, volatile hydrocarbons, and other chemicals. It is important to protect the sample from damaging by non-destructive testing. This should be used before making use of destructive methods that involves sampling of item for detailed tests. The forensic examination of Few of the trace evidences are discussed below. Hair Structure of hair follicle Hair examination helps in determination of origin whether animal or human. If animal, the species and possibly breed of the animal can be determined. But in case of humans, racial characteristics, length, an area of body and any treatment or damage to the body can be determined. Samples can be tested to determine the color, shape and chemical composition of the hair. The presence of toxins 
dyes and hair treatments are noted. This information can assist investigators in including or excluding particular individuals if the hair still has a follicle root attached. DNA testing may be used to identify an individual. Otherwise, hair comparison is typically used only to exclude. Collection Collected samples are sent to the laboratory along with control samples from a suspected individual. Control samples should include hair from all parts of the head and for pubic hair. The area should be combed for foreign hair prior to sample collection. Hair samples are primarily collected using tweezers. Analysis Hair samples are tested primarily by microscopic comparison and chemical analysis. Microscopic comparison identifies the shape, color, texture and other visual aspects of the sample while chemical analysis indicates the presence of toxins, drugs, dyes, and other chemicals. In some cases, hair is subjected to DNA analysis. Fiber. Fibers are thread-like elements from fabric or other materials such as mattress. Fibers fall into three categories, natural, animal or plant fibers like wool, cotton or silk. Synthetic, completely man-made products including polyester and nylon. And manufactured containing natural materials that are reorganized to create fibers such as rayon. Fiber examination helps in determination of origin of fiber whether natural or synthetic. Fibers are useful in crime scene investigation because their origin can be identified. A carpet fiber on a person's shoe can indicate the individual's presence at a crime scene. However, fibers are very mobile and can become airborne, get brushed off or fall from clothing. This mobility makes timely collection crucial to prevent loss of material or cross-contamination. Unknown and known fibers can be compared to determine its consistence from that source. Unknown fibers can be related to another known fibers in order to determine their origin as their source is not known. Collection Fibers cling to other fibers and hair, but may be easily brushed off. When approaching a scene, investigators will try to pinpoint the most likely locations for deposited fibers. For example, clothing from the victim or a suspected weapon are likely places to find fibers. Common collection methods include individual fiber collection using tweezers or vacuuming an area and sorting the materials at the laboratory. Trace evidence can also be gathered by tape lifting. However, this is not an ideal method of collection due to the destructive nature of adhesives. Sample that potentially hold fibers should be separately bagged to prevent cross-contamination. Analysis Trace evidence analysts often have only mere strands to work with. From these strands, fiber testing is done using high-powered comparison microscopes to compare texture in a side-by-side -side assessment. Chemical analysis can determine the chemical composition of the fibers. In the case of synthetic fabric or carpet, this information can be used to trace the product to the manufacturer using standard databases, 
further enhancing the probative value of the evidence. Glass Glass type source determination requires the comparison of a known sample with the question to identify the type and source of the questioned glass. Variety of material is used in making of glass. These materials make it easy to differentiate one glass sample from another. The properties of glass vary with exposed temperature during its manufacturing. Some basic properties are color, thickness and curvature that can also help in identifying different samples of glass just by visualizing them. On the other hand, optical properties depend on methods of glass manufacturing. Glass is also used to gather evidence. For example, collecting fingerprints or blood from a broken window. Broken glass fragments are very small and can be found in shoes, clothing, hair or skin. Gathering glass fragments from a crime scene can be valuable in determining end use or connecting people and objects to places. For example, windshields have a different color and composition than a drinking glass or a lead crystal vase. So, glass fragments on an individual's clothing could be compared to those collected at a hit and run scene to determine if that individual was present. Collection Trace examiners may use magnification and light to find glass fragments on clothing. An individual or at a crime scene and extract those using tweezers. Tape may also be used to collect glass samples. But the residue left from the adhesive makes this a less desirable collection method. Glass Fracture Analysis Glass can yield valuable information from fracture marks, lines and patterns. Testing for unique characteristics such as color, optical properties and density can determine the type of glass. For example, a window pane, vase or bottled glass. A detailed elemental analysis can be done using laser ablation mass spectrometry, induction coupled mass spectrometry, X-ray fluorescence or other instruments. Reflective index or RI of glass determines the passing of light through it. RI is measured for any fragment of glass. This property helps in determining the status of two glass sample. Paint. Painted surfaces are ubiquitous and the large range of layered colors, lusters and types often make paint high value as evidence. Transfer of paint is possible in situations where one vehicle hits another vehicle, a pedestrian or a building. In a property crime where a tool is used to break into a building, paint transferred to or from the tool can connect the tool to the location. Paint films are characterized by a number of physical and chemical features. Physical characteristics are color, thickness, layer sequence, surface and layer features, weathering, and contaminants. Chemical components may include pigments, polymers and additives. Various methods are used to determine and evaluate these features. As the sample size and preservation of sample cause these methods to be applied in a proper sequence in order to strengthen the power of an analytical scheme. Forensic science is mainly concerned with determining the difference between known and unknown samples used for analysis. This difference can be in their appearance, 
layer thickness or sequence, size, shape or other physical or chemical feature of sample. It is of value for a forensic examiner to understand the significance of observed differences. Absence of these significant differences may lead to missing of important clues regarding the origin of the paint samples. Collection To collect paint, peel off or remove small amounts of paint from the source, careful while collecting all layers. Samples as small as 1 square millimeter can be used for testing. For a car crash scene, paint samples from the point of contact would be photographed, collected and stored in such a way so as to protect it for carrying out further examination. This is particularly important in cases of examining fracture matches. Paint samples are typically collected by scraping small sections down to the metal or original surface or using tweezers to collect chips already dislodged. Analysis Powerful comparison microscopes are used to compare colors, thickness and layer patterns and luster or to match fragments and tears. Chemical testing such as pyrolysis gas chromatography PGC can be used to determine chemical composition, colors and pigments and other qualities. Analyzing automotive paint can identify the make, model and sometimes the year of a vehicle. Soil Forensic soil scientists are concerned with soils as it can be replaced by human activities. Scientists compare them with natural soils or soil databases in order to locate the scene of crimes. The soil samples are obtained from crime scenes by investigator. The soil may be transported by vehicles, shoes or shovel. The properties of soil are diverse in nature. Therefore, forensic soil scientists use it as evidence in environmental investigations. Collection. Soil samples can be collected in different ways depending on where the sample is being collected from. If samples are being collected indoors or from a vehicle, vacuuming is generally used. If the sample is outdoors, it is collected by placing a teaspoon of soil into a plastic vial. When found on a tool, it is wrapped in plastic and then sent to the lab for testing. Collecting soil samples of a body isn't difficult than collecting a sample from anywhere else, but it takes more work and care so that evidence doesn't get contaminated. When collecting samples from a body, samples should be taken at regular intervals and a different spoon should be used each time. Once the soil samples are collected, they are sent to the laboratory. At the laboratory, samples should be separated from the victim and the suspect. Analysis To examine the samples, the examiner will first do the microscopic analysis so as to perform testing of the mineral content of the soil. Another test used for identification of the origin of soil is the density test. The density test is called the density gradient tube. This test consists of adding liquid to two glass tubes. The liquid in both tubes is the same, but the ratio are different. This represents two different densities. The soil sample is added to both liquid samples. After the soil samples become suspended in the liquid, the separation of the bands can then be analyzed to reveal the profile of the soil. Heat tests can also be used to test the soil reaction and electron microscopes can be used to examine the structure of the minerals in the soil. During examination, an examiner might find that some soil samples may contain biological evidence such as saliva, semen or blood. 
if biological evidence is found in the sample the whole soil sample should be sent to the laboratory for testing gsr gunshot residue this is also called cartridge discharge residue cdr or firearm discharge residue fdr it is deposited on hands and clothes of person discharging a firearm it contains both burnt and unburnt particles the propellant and possibly fragments of bullet cartridge case and the firearm investigators test people's cloth and skin for gsr in order to determine whether they are involved in crime or not or their presence at the time of crime suppose if they are near the gun gsr may be deposited on the skin or clothes it is estimated that gunshot residue can travel over 3 to 5 feet from the gun few traces may be found in distance exceeding this parameter case study one of the most famous cases involving trace evidence was that of wayne williams convicted of two counts of murder in 1982 in the infamous atlanta child murders case for a period of 22 months beginning in 1979 30 black children and young men had disappeared or died under suspicious circumstances through the investigation trace examiners found fibers and animal hairs that could not be excluded when looking for links between the cases by identifying the fibers as carpeting finding the manufacturer and computing probability statistics regarding the chance that they would have come from somewhere other than evilliams home investigators were able to begin to use this evidence to tie the victims to williams in doing the same with the animal hair in comparison with williams dog then calculating the statistics that someone would have a dog and carpeting that would be consistent with those of williams made the case very strong and resulted in a conviction in this example trace evidence was the centerpiece of the prosecutor's case and only careful evidence collection and examination made it possible so dear students let us summarize what we have learned in this module we have learned that trace evidences include very small pieces of evidence which are found at the scene of crime and that can be used to identify or link a suspect to a crime the collection of sample we have studied can be done by either picking or vacuuming or clipping or swabbing and lifting we also studied that the investigators are responsible for packaging and carrying and so that should be done with proper care and what are these cares let us revise again that is you have to take precautions to prevent the contamination careful packaging of items has to be done immediate transfer of items containing soil should be done to the laboratory and all volatile samples should be transported to the laboratory in time we also studied that several instrumentation and visualization tools are used by analyst during evidence analysis and these includes the scanning electron microscopy stereoscopic microscopy ultraviolet light microscopy polarized light microscopy gas chromatography mass spectrometry ion chromatography ftir that is the fourier transform infrared spectroscopy pyrolysis gas chromatography and micro spectrophotometry so dear student i am sure that after going through this module 
you are now knowledgeable in trace evidence, how to collect and how to do the analysis.